Hey girls, so I didn't really know what to do, so here are some really random facts. Did you know that Bram Stoker was from Ireland? And Bram Stoker, if you don't know, is the person who wrote Dracula. Originally, sweaters in Ireland were made out of what they called family weaves. So if a fisherman drowned, their family could recognize them. The band U2 is from Ireland. Most Irish castles had these things called murder holes, which were trap doors on the ceiling by the entrance that would hold hot liquids, daggers, or other deadly things, so you could kill any unwanted visitors. In one of my favorite shows, Misfits, the, one of the characters is from Ireland. The character is Nathan, and he is played by Robert Sheehan. The Irish are known for, and also very stereotypically known for, um, drinking a lot, and they especially drink a lot of Guinness. Shamrock is the name for a three-leaf clover. St. Patrick used this to get the pagans out of Ireland, as the number three represents the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Therefore, it also represents Christianity and Catholicism. That is why it is used for St. Patrick's Day. However, four-leaf clovers have a totally different meaning. This clover was used among the Celtics, pagans, and druids to represent faith, hope, and love, and luck. This is a poem about what they believed. I'm looking over a four-leaf clover that I have overlooked before. One leaf is sunshine, the second is rain. Third is the roses that grow in the lane. No need explaining the one remaining is somebody I adore. I'm looking over a four-leaf clover that I overlooked before. And here's another one that was written in 1620. If a man walking in the fields finds any four-leaf grass, he shall in a small while after find some good thing. Doesn't really rhyme. Oh well. It is said that for every 10,000 three-leaf clovers, there is one four-leaf clover. There's one four-leaf clover. Between 1845 and 1852, the Irish went through the potato famine, and many people died, and there was lots of problems, and disease, and hunger, and all sorts of things. What I fail to understand is why they could only eat potatoes. I mean, they're an island, so they could have eaten fish, and probably other crops. I mean, but hey, I'm not one to judge. <laughs> the Irish have the tales of the leprechauns, which are these shifty little creatures. And here's a little thing that I found on them, so I'll read it to you now. Leprechauns have also become self-appointed guardians of ancient treasure, burying it in the cracks, in cracks or pots. This may be the one reason why leprechauns tend to avoid contact with humans, whom they regard as foolish, flighty, and greedy creatures. If caught by a mortal, he will promise great wealth if allowed to go free. He carries two leather pouches. In one there is a silver shilling and a magic coin that returns to the purse each time it is paid out. In the other he carries a gold coin which he uses to try and bribe his way out of difficult situations. This coin usually turns to, leave, to leaves or ashes once the leprechaun has parted with it. However, you must never take your eye off him, for he can vanish in an instant. The leprechauns hide their gold at the end of a rainbow, where no humans can find it and they can always have protection over it. And finally, something that I had no idea, the Titanic was built in Northern Ireland. Who knew? Well, probably all their people, just not me. Oh well. <laughs> well, there you have it. There's some really, really random facts. So, sorry I wasn't actually in this video. I just... I was busy all day and it's just been crazy, so I just wanted to do this. And I will see Taylor on Monday. Goodbye!